Environmental regulations are crippling large parts of the Australian economy, especially in agriculture. And the regulations usually have no environmental improvement associated with them. In fact, often they make things worse. But today I'm going to talk about one of the most ridiculous environmental regulation, and that is the inclusion of the Bundaberg region under the extremely stringent Great Barrier Reef regulations. The previous Labor government claimed that fertiliser, mud and pesticides coming from farms in the Bundy region are killing the Great Barrier Reef, so they need to be regulated and restricted and basically controlled by some faceless bureaucrat. And look, this is actually quite serious because guess what they make in Bundaberg? And about 120 other crops. So this is a food bowl, literally. It turns out there's a bit of a campaign to release Bundy from these regulations and I'm going to be giving a public lecture in Bundaberg on the 3rd of February for anybody who's interested. But here is a summary of why Bundy should be released from reef regulations. So let's start with a little bit of geography. This is the Great Barrier Reef off the Queensland coast. This point is the southern extremity of the reef, the southern part of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park in fact. And this is where Bundaberg is. Now, reef regulations are special extra rules that apply to farms in river catchments that flow into the Great Barrier Reef. Catchments like the enormous Burdekin River run directly into the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. So does the Fitzroy River and lots of other rivers. But what about the Burnett River, the main river that runs through the Bundaberg region? Well, it doesn't even flow into the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. So why is it classified as a reef catchment when by definition it is not? The Great Barrier Reef Marine Park is way to the north of the Bundy region. And guess how close the nearest coral reef on the Great Barrier Reef is to Bundaberg? It's Lady Elliot Island, about 70 kilometres away. Now I know what you're thinking, maybe they argue that the floodwaters from the Burnett reached Lady Elliot Island in the ocean currents. Surely there must be lots of evidence for this which they've spoken about and documented and that's why the Bundaberg needs to be under reef regulations. Well, this document has all the information on why Bundy should be in the uh, reef regulations. That's my Series 1 Land Rover manual. This is the sum total of all the data on why. They make it up, but it actually gets worse. You see, those closest reef to the Bundaberg region are right next to the huge East Australia current. This is the major current, right? It's the one that Nemo rode to get down from the Northern Great Barrier Reef down to Sydney. It's huge. In fact, the average Burnett River discharge for an entire year is worth just two minutes worth of flow from the East Australia current. Just ponder that, two minutes worth. That's how big the EAC is, the East Australia current. And it's right next to the reefs rather than 70 to 100 kilometres away, which is what the Burnett River is. So the water quality on those reefs is completely determined by the enormous East Australia current, not the Burnett. In fact, those reefs don't even know about the Burnett River. But it gets better, or worse actually. There's a huge eddy in the East Australia current called the Capricorn Eddy. And like all eddies, it's a vortex, like the vortex when you stir your cup of tea or coffee, and it brings the deep water up to the surface. And in this case, it brings huge amounts of deep, cold, nutrient-rich water. Now remember, Bundy farmers are accused of killing the reef by from the fertilizer they use. Well, there's 50 to 100 times more fertilizer that comes up in this eddy that comes down the Burnett River. And the ocean bed is also has a huge exchange of nutrients. In fact, the seabed between Bundaberg and the reef would cycle very roughly 100 times more nutrients than comes down the Burnett River. So the Burnett is utterly irrelevant when it comes to nutrients. And then there's the thing you might have noticed Nutrients aren't exactly poison, are they? They make stuff grow. So Bundy adds an insignificant amount of good stuff to the Great Barrier Reef. Sounds pretty terrible, doesn't it? So why don't we just blame the farmers? In fact, let's burn them at the stake. I mean, 
the farmers are as likely to be damaging the reef as old women were likely to be witches in the Middle Ages. And they burnt witches, so let's burn the farmers, or at least let's regulate them to death. But what about pesticides from the farm? Well, this document again shows all the data on the pesticides, the effect of pesticides from the Burnett River out on the Great Barrier Reef. They didn't even bother to measure them. Why would they? Because everywhere else they've measured them on the Great Barrier Reef proper. They can't measure them because they're in such low concentrations that even with the most ultra, ultra sensitive scientific equipment, they are undetectable. Well, what about the mud? Same document, same amount of information. Well, of course, I mean, look at these pictures of Lady Elliot Island and all the others. Where is the mud? Have you ever seen such cleaner water than this? And finally, the pièce de résistance, the fallback argument for those who want to try to, who actually know that there's stuff all impact of farms on the Great Barrier Reef, they say, well, the inshore ecosystems and even the Burnett River estuary and the freshwater swamps further upstream are all linked ecologically to the reef because maybe some fish swims out there occasionally. I actually did a video on this. They actually talk about the freshwater ecosystems of the Great Barrier Reef, which is completely barking mad. The reef is out to sea, it's a marine system. So with this link, Bundy needs to be regulated and same amount of information on this supposed uh, link and the magnitude of the link and the importance of those, this link. This stuff is not science, it's just completely made up and it makes as much sense as burning witches in the Middle Ages. We'll release a full length video with all the gory detail after the talk in Bundaberg on the 3rd of February, but be in no doubt, there is going to be a major push to release Bundy from reef regulation. And those scientific institutions who have put up together all the information, they need to take this seriously because the times they are a changing and people have lost trust in them because they're not doing proper quality assured work and it's now become completely obvious right around the world what's going on. The science institutions now have an opportunity to give us confidence in them by engaging with us in this debate.